All right, I guess we'll get started. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Michael Goodstein. I'm a neonatologist at York Hospital. Um, I uh, run the York County Cribs for Kids program, um, and I'm also a member of the American Academy of Pediatrics Task Force on SIDS. Um, the reason that we are here this morning is because October is SIDS Awareness Month, and uh, we wanted to get out into the community and provide information on infant sleep safety and acknowledge uh, the losses of the family who um, have suffered from the tragedy of SIDS. And so I have Mayor Bracey here with us this morning uh, to uh, give a proclamation um, on SIDS Awareness Month. And then we're going to meet um, a mother who has um, uh, agreed to speak about her personal experience in having had a SIDS loss. And then we're going to finish up our session with talking about how to make our babies safe in our community so that we can try to reduce the number of these uh, tragedies in our community. Thank you. Thank you everyone for being here today um, to our health bureau and the staff. Good to see Dr. Hall. And where she go? Back over here in the back there, Terry. Um, thank you all for your work in this area too. I recall my days as a community development director working closely with you with the, the Cribs and PAC program for uh, our community. So it's good to see that that funds are still available to allow that program to happen. Thank you for your leadership and partnership with us as well, too. We do appreciate the spread. In awareness of National Sudden Infant Death Syndrome Month, uh, October 2012, I have a proclamation. And it reads, whereas the month of October is designated as National Sudden Infant Death Syndrome Awareness Month to focus on generating public understanding, compassion for bereaved families, and support for medical research. And whereas each year, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, SIS, the sudden and unexpected death of apparently healthy babies is a major cause of death of infants between the ages of one month and one year. And whereas recognizing SIDS Awareness Month will provide us with an opportunity to increase our understanding of the great tragedy involved in the death of newborn babies. And whereas SIDS Awareness Month enables us to consider how, as individuals and communities, we can meet the needs of bereaved families and work to prevent the cause, causes of sudden infant death. Now, therefore, I, C.K. Embracy, Mayor of the City of York, do hereby recognize the month of October as National Sudden Infant Death Syndrome Awareness Month and urge parents, caregivers, and researchers to unite with governmental businesses and community service organizations to bring about a greater public understanding of the prevention of this tragic syndrome and hasten the elimination of sudden infant death syndrome. Given under my hand and seal the city of York this 11th day of October in the year of our Lord 2012. See Kim Bracey. So, I will present that to you, sir. And um, thank you again for your work. Um, I'll let you get back to the podium. Thank you very, very kindly, Mayor. You're welcome, sir. Okay. Um, next, I would uh, like to introduce you to uh, Carol Shapiro. Um, Carol does a lot of uh, community service work in York, and she's been a member of our Cribs for Kids organization for a number of years now, and um, she's going to speak about her own personal experience with the loss of a young infant. Hello, my name is Carol Shapiro. I lost my son, Stephen, who passed away from SIDS, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, on February 13, 1979. He was two months old at the time of his death. Stephen was born a healthy baby boy. I placed him in his crib for a morning nap, prone, which is on his stomach. When I went to check him, he was purple and not breathing. At that time, prone was the recommended sleep position. He was not considered at high risk for SIDS. I didn't smoke, I breastfed, and Stephen lived in a safe environment. Since 1992, the recommendation has changed and we are to put babies in their cribs to sleep on their back, which is recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics. I often look at young men that are the age that Stephen would be today. And I think if we only knew in 1979 what we know now, Stephen would probably be alive today. I have two grandsons and I feel so fortunate that they are put to sleep on their back. I work with the Cribs for Kids organization to help spread the word about safe sleep.
I want to thank Carol for sharing her touching story and putting a face to this once mysterious disease that we call SIDS. October is SIDS Awareness Month and we pause here today to honor the memory of the children lost to tragedy and acknowledge the pain and grief of the families who must find a way to carry on in their absence. Carol's story shows us that no matter how young the baby or how long ago the loss, these children are always a part of their families, they are never forgotten, and they continue to impact their loved ones. SIDS, as, Dr. Oh, sorry, as Mayor Bracey mentioned, is a sudden unexpected infant death that remains unexplained after a complete investigation. In the U.S., SIDS is the third most common cause of death for all infants, and it's the leading cause of death for infants between one month and one year of age. After investigating a death, though, sometimes it's determined that the baby did not die of SIDS, but died of a suffocation or strangulation. And in other cases, we cannot de determine which is the actual cause. This year, the Center for Disease Control reported that um, these suffocation deaths are the leading cause of infant uh, death, uh, injury deaths in infants, and that there's been a 30% increase in the last decade. When you add up all these infant deaths, it comes out to over 4,000 babies dying in the U.S. every year. If you do the math, that comes out to about one baby dying every two hours of every day of the year in this country. This is a silent epidemic in our communities, and we are here today to break that silence. As parents and grandparents, we love our children. We want to make them as safe as possible. And when you make your decisions on how to sleep your baby, you should have access to the best medical evidence, the reasons why we make these recommendations. So I'm going to spend the next few minutes discussing with you how to make the baby's sleep environment as safe as possible because accidents are preventable. You can help prevent infant suffocation deaths. And even though we cannot prevent SIDS, the recommendations to prevent these accidental sleep deaths also minimize the risk of SIDS. If you take anything away from this, I want you to remember the ABCs of safe sleep alone, on the back, in a crib, with no smoking. The recommendation for Back to Sleep has been with us now for 20 years. In the first 10 years of this Back to Sleep campaign, we saw the number of parents putting their babies on the back increase from less than 20% to up to 75%. And during that same time period, the number of deaths from SIDS was cut in half. We estimate, I'm sorry, this is one of the most successful public health campaigns in the last quarter century in this country. And we estimate that over 30,000 children are alive today because of back to sleep. Now, many families still remain fearful that sleeping on the back could be a problem if the baby spits up. But this turns out not to be the case. When babies spit up, most of the fluid comes out of the mouth. Anything that remains in the throat is forced down by gravity, and the lowest structure is the esophagus, or the feeding tube. The airway is higher up and therefore protected. Also, when we swallow, even if we get a few drops of liquid in our airway, we have a normal reflex to cough rather violently to clear the throat. And this is not choking, this is a normal safety mechanism, and babies have the same ability to protect their lungs when they spit up. For every sleep time, the baby should be in a crib, bassinet, or play yard that is approved by the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Drop rail cribs are no longer used because too many babies have died of accidental deaths from defective products. Slats should be no wider than 2 and 3 eighths inches. That would be about the size of a soda can upright should not be able to pass through those slats. Make sure the mattress is firm and fits snugly against the crib rail. If there is a gap, then the baby can slip down in there and get wedged and suffocate. Use a tightly fitted sheet and nothing else under the baby. Soft objects around the face can lead to suffocation. So no pillows, heavy quilts, loose blankets, stuffed animals, or even bumpers. Instead of blankets, consider just using infant sleep clothing or a wearable blanket. But don't overbundle or overheat the baby. Keep the temperature comfortable for a normally dressed adult and overheated babies at higher risk for SIDS. So the baby should require no more than one more additional layer of clothing than the adult. Now many parents want to stay close to their baby during sleep to keep a close watch over them and protect them and this is a great idea. Earlier I mentioned in the ABCs that A was for the baby sleeping alone. But let me explain further because what we want is that no other children or pets are put in the baby's sleep area and that the baby's not in an adult bed, couch, or other adult sleep surface. By having the baby in your room you can have him or her close to you for cares including easy breastfeeding, bonding, and protection. But please be aware of the dangers of sharing an adult sleep surface. Surface. These surfaces are too soft and can increase the risk to the baby. And study after study has shown that bed sharing is a danger to babies and far too many parents have accidentally rolled over and entrapped and suffocated their babies, leading to death. 
The most recent analysis of this data shows that any baby sleeping in the parent's bed has an increased risk three times of dying compared to that baby put in the crib. If there's smoking in that room, the risk is increased six times. And the risk is greatest for our smallest babies. If they're less than three months old, the risk of dying is tenfold higher than if the baby is in the crib. Just one more word on smoking. We all know that secondhand smoke is bad for all of us, especially our babies, but if you're pregnant or if you're thinking of getting pregnant, please find a way to quit now. When you smoke, the fetus is smoking with you, and there are chemicals in that smoke that affect the developing baby's brain, and it increases the risk for SIDS. Researchers believe that a third of SIDS cases could be avoided if women did not smoke during their pregnancy. Finally, a quick word about breast milk. It's well documented that breast milk has multiple benefits to the health of the baby, and it's recommended that babies receive breast milk through the first year of life. Well, here's another benefit of breast milk. Studies show that it has a protective effect against SIDS, reducing the risk of death by up to 50%. In concluding, I want to thank Mayor Bracey, the Health Bureau, and the City of York for taking the time to focus on the problem of sudden infant death syndrome and other infant sleep-related deaths, which cause such tragedy, and how we as a community can come together to make every sleep environment a safe one for our babies. For more information, you can call the York Hospital Children, I'm sorry, Childbirth and Family Health Education Center at 851-2241, or if you go to the web, www.healthychildren.org, or cribsforkids.org, or firstcandle.org. Thank you very much. Be happy to take questions. Doc, do you have any uh, York County or Central Pennsylvania or Susquehanna Valley numbers on uh, either growth or decline of SIDS cases? That's a really good question, Ed. Um, it's very hard to make measurements the smaller the population base is, so we usually look at this from state to state or across the country and do country to country comparisons. We do have local data. Um, the Pennsylvania Child Death Review uh, teams keep track of that for us. Um, we, are, we are about average over all the state of Pennsylvania compared to the U.S. population uh, in terms of the SIDS rates. Um, for York County, um, we have we usually average somewhere between about five to seven deaths. But over the last couple of years, 2010 being the best year, we were down to two deaths. Um, sometimes you know, I don't want to take too much away from these numbers because it just takes one or two uh, in a small when you're talking about a small set of numbers to really impact um, uh, your incidence. And so just random chance could be involved with that. Um, we are hoping that some of the things that we've implemented in the community and through the hospital will start to be having an impact in terms of reducing the numbers of these uh, tragedies. And we have a program that is a model for the state of Pennsylvania that was started here in 2008, where every family that delivers at York Hospital, and we've exported this to Memorial, Gettysburg, Hanover Hospitals as well, they all, uh, the, the nurses all do safe sleep modeling of that baby so the parents see the right way to do it. Um, we uh, have them watch an educational video on infant sleep safety and uh, we give them brochures and information to take home and then we have them sign an acknowledgement form uh, that they have received the information and understand that babies should sleep on the back, that, that being prone increases the risk of death and that bed sharing is a risk factor for increasing uh, the risk to that baby. So, the, so a, sh a shorter answer if you don't mind. So, so the, sorry. <laughs> in the last five years, what have you seen the numbers are up or down and what would be the principal reason? David, did you want to? Yeah, I, uh, you know, just to supplement Dr. Goodstein's answer, uh, I think you can question statistics in small population, but the short answer is, uh, if we're talking about in the best of years, if one or two children died because of unsafe sleep, that's a terrible year. Uh, every year, we're looking at two to six cases of children in York who die be unnecessarily because of, of sleep conditions. Uh, and, and we think with programs like this uh, and by days like this and getting the message out that we can really make a difference. Is that York City or York County? York County. York County. And, and Dave is absolutely right. I mean, the goal is that we shouldn't have any of these deaths. Now, there will be scattered SIDS deaths, but I will tell you that what we're finding is that um, in 90% of these deaths, we're finding that the baby's been in an unsafe sleep environment, whether it's because they're face down or there's been smoking or bed sharing or pillows and things of that nature. So, um, you know, when you talk about the back to sleep campaign, Right now, about 75% of people put their babies on their back, which means a quarter of the population still isn't doing this. So if we could just get people to take away the basic 
message uh, about keeping the babies safe on the back, um, we could see a significant reduction in the number of these deaths. Any other questions? Okay, great. Then I want to thank everybody for coming out today. Really appreciate you um, taking the time to get the word out there. Thank you. Thank you again for your leadership, your partnership. Thank you to the York City Health Bureau, Terry and Dr. Hulk, for your work that you do every day for city residents, but beyond that, York County and the state. We appreciate it very, very much. Thank you. And thank you to Carol for sharing her story as well with us this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.